<laughs> Holy crap! I hate to say it, but I wish there was something to attack. Yeah, it's too bad nobody bought a cart of fruit. You beautiful son of a bitch. This is what they want. I'm the one coming with an icy tongue. Rise by gum, might get gum. Hypothermic got until they mind go dumb like. Uh, hold that thought. I need a light, my blunt. Look, I might be right and I like to fight, but I'm way too high. Better bite my tongue. Right here, butt fart. Ooh, that was awesome. Right? Skipping your cold open and intro. How dare they change the format of their own show? You know what? This joke is actually pretty clever. It's a nice little meta intro to the video, and I've honestly got to give some props to whoever thought of it. I see the lights Jerry hung around the roof of the house in Rattlestar Rick Lactica are no longer part of the arrangement. So here's a sin for pissing all over Christmas traditions. And here's another sin for pissing all over continuity. And here's a third sin for, well, just pissing in general. Discount Jeremy makes a cringy pee joke that isn't funny cliche. Also, that entire sin was incredibly stupid. Just because Jerry put up a different and more complex Christmas lights array in a previous episode doesn't mean he'd do the exact same thing now. Do you not remember what happened to him when he put up that display? Yeah, it actually makes sense that he didn't do it again. Rick Sanchez here <laughs> with gifts from across the multiverse. Come on, people. St. Nicholas was right there. Skip. So, pandering to the misguided idea that your captive audience will appreciate you traveling the vast multiverse to acquire gifts that they think they'll love while failing to realize the hollowness that often comes with obtaining things you once thought were unobtainable. Or, more simply, pulling a multiverse of madness. Discount Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that isn't a sin of the episode cliche. Jerry, an extra-dimensional version of Miracle on 34th Street. <gasps> I love the idea that in the entire multiverse, the best gift Rick could find for Jerry was a f***ing movie. It brings me comfort knowing that there just isn't the technology out there to give him a tolerable personality or a few extra brain cells. He said he loved it, so Discount Jeremy sends something he likes cliche. Also, complaining about somebody having an intolerable personality and being really stupid is very hypocritical coming from you. And as we all know, hypocrisy is hypocritical. Also, is that a f***ing VHS tape? And for the people young enough to ask, what the f*** is a VHS tape? Watch your language and get the f*** off my lawn. Yes, it is a VHS tape. And what's this in here? He didn't say anything critical or funny in this sin, so I don't understand why they left it in the video. Morty's only going to use this very honorable weapon in designated Jedi zones. Hearing this caused the media object between my ears that Jerry is missing to wonder, how did this lightsaber make it into the very not-Jedi, not-Disney designated zone of Rick and Morty? Wait, does Disney own Rick and Morty? All right, I got, let me see here. Okay, we've got Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon. Hi, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, Cartoon Network, Warner Brothers. Oh, no. Oh, no. Damn you, Discovery. Everything wrong with Rick and Morty, ladies and gentlemen. The show is owned by a company. Here, I'll, I'll do it myself. No! I know that for the most part, Rick and Morty fly by the seat of their AI-controlled pants, but on this occasion, I really think there should have been some firm ground rules in place before laser sword playtime. Simple things like no running in the house, or no arguing over who gets to use it next, or no leaning on one of the greatest weapons in pop culture history to make your finale more entertaining. So you wanted the show to go out of its way to do something that would not fit the characters at all? That doesn't sound right. I'm hazardly storing the able to slice through metal laser death stick right next to your definitely not stronger than metal taint adjacent intangibles. Haphazardly pointing things out on the screen right next to a bunch of meaningless and unfunny joke sins. Okay, we overshot it. Good problem to have. Still doing the ear roll? I told you we should have gone to 10. No, Morty, not 10. Rick is right on the money here, and how does Morty not see that? Obviously, there's a very important story-based reason for Morty to go to floor 10, but labeling the button with a sign that says Morty should definitely not go here at any point during the finale would have felt less contrived than making Morty a total dumbass. Um, what kind of crack are you smoking? Morty has always been a dumbass with only momentary flashes of intelligence. That's pretty much the basis for his entire character. Well, that and the fact that he loves jerking off. Rick! You dumb robot you had one job a job that you you dumb f***ing human could have made a whole lot easier by not putting an unsecured stop to your secret lab in the f***ing elevator why does this lab even have an entrance to stumble upon we're expected to believe that rick would rely on a rick bot to keep people away instead of just putting this lab somewhere completely void of life like the moon an asteroid or jerry's skull rick wanted to use his lab at the house because it would have taken a crazy amount of work to make another just as good one elsewhere it's a very simple answer besides asking why it has an entrance is just really dumb you gave him a f***ing lightsaber for christmas it's almost like someone designed me to be 22 percent more thoughtful than right. you he f 
fucking lightsaber is his definition of 22% more thoughtful? How is gifting one of the coolest pieces of technology ever created equate to 22% more thoughtful than putting your grandchild at risk on a near daily basis? Move aside, Morty. I'll put up with living in the anus of a space lizard if it means I get a fucking lightsaber. Everything wrong with Rick and Morty, ladies and gentlemen. Lightsabers are awesome. Presidential Blackhawk is landing on the lawn. Who dropped a lightsaber perfectly f***ing vertical? How close do the Smiths live to the damn White House? I can buy that the president is somehow monitoring their house for shenanigans, but he managed to get here within minutes of shit going sideways. Wait, you don't think that's possible? For the president to show up at the house within minutes? Dude, they've already got the birds spying on us, and most of the sheeple out there got the microchip jab. None of this should really be a surprise, you hear? Now, where's my sister? I'm feeling horny. You know what's in the hilt of that thing? Kyber crystals! Okay, nerd. I mean, right? Plus, it's not kyber crystals. The lightsaber's power source is clearly the incoherent ramblings of a man who, 20 years after, didn't realize he'd made the greatest movie ever and decided he needed to keep tampering with it like a little kid and make Han f***ing Solo not be the kind of guy who shoots first! I mean, obviously I agree with him that Han shot first, but that's a sin of that movie, not this show. Whatever it is, when it hits the core, it's gonna cause a chain reaction that destroys the Earth. How the f*** do they know what effect a fictional gadget's gonna have on the planet's core? And how does this thing even exist? Let me stop you right there. You're about to go on a long, very boring rant that isn't funny or credible in terms of criticism. You know, because this is a cartoon. Besides, towards the end of the sin, he admits that, within the context of the multiverse, all of this is technically possible. So this entire sin is just utter bullshit and deserves five sins. If I wanted the government in my house, I'd buy an Alexa. Right? What kind of an idiot would be dumb enough to do that? Hey, uh, Google, is uh, the government listening to me? <clears throat> I'm singing, I'm singing a song, I'm your assistant and I'm singing la 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> That's so f***ing cool! Unfunny joke is unfunny. Also, even though it wasn't Discount Jeremy doing the singing, it still wasn't pleasant to listen to, so... Also, also, that fake-ass laugh. I'm no expert, but it seems we got a... a certain amount of time to build a big drill ship. Saying this when there's a literal time remaining counter behind you. That's the joke. Good luck finding a good scientist on Christmas! I mean, Christmas doesn't take away a good scientist's ability to be good, does it? And yes, I'm sure he meant to say, good luck finding a good scientist to come down here on Christmas, but he didn't say that, and I'm the type of grinchy asshole to make sure that gets pointed out. So you're admitting that you're an annoying asshole who thinks he's funny but isn't? Okay then, here's ten more sins for kind of recognizing your shortcomings and refusing to change. Alright genius, I give you permission to make our drill shit fast. Calling someone a genius who's adorned in nothing more than a lab coat and boxer shorts while playing with a yo-yo. Then you say, but Mr. Narrator, yo-yos are fun! And then I say, watch your language and get the f*** off my lawn. I'm sorry, did he think that was funny? Damn, that's embarrassing. Vertisaber, state your prime directive. To stay vertical. And yet, Vertisaber will almost immediately not be... Vertical. Discount Jeremy points things out on the screen, cliche. Progress report. Vertisaber, do you copy? Do I have to respond every time? I know this is leading to a joke about the dangers of AI technology becoming too clever to follow our orders, but is Rick really dumb enough to instigate this? He's looking directly at a visual update of Vertisaber's progress, and yet he's still pestering it every few seconds, as if he's Jerry wondering why his grilled cheese sandwiches keep breaking the toaster. As we've seen consistently throughout the show, Rick is a very controlling asshole who's also very arrogant, so him underestimating the AI and checking in on it so often actually fits his character. Approaching the lightsaber and T-minus oh, now. T-minus now. Sorry. And this apology continuing for several more seconds means that there actually was a T-minus amount of time he could have shared but didn't. Stop making a mockery of the T-minus system. Movie tension isn't going to falsify itself. This is a comedic cartoon. It's not supposed to follow real-world logic to the letter. These types of sins are not entertaining or funny at all. They're just a waste of time. I would be honored if you would carve the ham this year. I would be less sin happy if someone in this family would acknowledge that they have zero clue where Morty has been for the last few hours and maybe if one of them was concerned about that fact. Please refer to the previous sin. Also, putting fruit on meat. Stop it. Discount Jeremy is a picky bitch. Fruit on meat can be great when it's done right. Aaron just doesn't like it because, in all likelihood, he has the palate of a five-year-old. It makes sense, seeing as he has the intellectual capacity of a five-year-old. Chicken! Give me ten days! Give me ten days! My grandpa, you're a f***ing 
own robot. I'm not sure if I should send Jerry for just going ahead and cutting into Rick, even though Jerry couldn't be 100% positive Morty was telling the truth, or if I should remove a sin for Jerry taking the initiative for once. I'm pretty sure there's no God that would forgive me for removing a sin for Jerry, so I'm going to go ahead and play those just in case there's an afterlife odds. Discount Jeremy sends something he likes, or at least should like because it was funny, cliche. Just glad I'm not the one that ruined Christmas. I mean, you did make your family aware that Rick was an imposter bot, and they were perfectly happy and content with not knowing that, so you didn't not not ruin Christmas. You're ruining my day right now by refusing to be funny or entertaining, but you don't hear me bitching about it. Wait, that's actually exactly what I'm doing right now. Ah, oh, well. Monster get people of Earth. Hmm, that's never good. I'm not here to play the president, who is on TV, pauses so that Beth can get her line in. Discount Jeremy points things out on the screen cliche. We launched the White House into space. Well, I'm busted. But other than comedic timing, there's really no reason you should be. Was the lack of gravity in space a surprise? Did the genius minds who managed to turn the f***ing White House into a f***ing spaceship also forget to tell the president that making this broadcast at the exact moment they lose gravity was not a good idea? Did nobody tell you that taking a cartoon at face value isn't a good idea? Well, clearly not, seeing as you still insist on making these horrible, boring videos. Ah! Scream all you want, Rick, but this unholy monitor monstrosity is totally within your power to change. Why has this map been spread across multiple monitors? Cartoon. Not supposed to make sense. Monster get oh, so now there's gravity on the White House. F*** you. Please refer to the previous sin. Look at him! Lightsaber hand! Which means the president already had access to the lightsaber technology, so why didn't he just have one made for himself instead of going through all the bullshit of stealing Mortys? Dude, how is this so difficult for you to understand? He was able to make these lightsabers because he stole Morty's lightsaber. You just randomly assume that he already had that technology before stealing Morty's saber when you have absolutely no evidence of that whatsoever. Robot with lightsabers for eyes. God definitely can't see. So this droid wasn't tested, like, at all? Skip. Star Wars rules say you have to forgive me. Actually, the Star Wars rules say that Jerry has to swoop in and throw the president into a bottomless void where we miss the next 30 to 35 years of Morty's life. And instead of seeing any of the cool shit he does, just skip straight to his green milk addicted retirement years. What are you talking about? That never happened. At least not in canon. Nope, I don't care what any of you Disney fanboy dumbasses want to say. The trilogy that must not be named does not exist. Also, you could probably have a Portal X Machina sin in just about every episode, but this one seems more insane than most, so here's one sin plus the other 50 we should have already given in previous episodes. And here's a sin for you still not knowing what the term Deus Ex Machina means. I should have included you in my shit. So we're clear, no one should ever be included in your shit. That's your shit. It's personal, and also biodegradable, I think. Discount Jeremy makes a cringy poop joke that isn't funny cliche. Yes, I bet you have.